Hello, I'm Michael Wilde. This is part five of the creature tutorial series that I've been making, and today we're looking at look dev inside of Maya and Arnold. So first up, I need to give a quick shout out to Texturing XYZ and their displacement tool plugin for Maya. So this helps split up the multi-channel XYZ displacement that I've been painting with in the previous videos. And it just means you can change the intensity of the different layers at different times. And so check out this website for more info on that. And so that's what I'm using from the beginning. So here you can just see me setting up the displacement. I've imported my textures and I'm just going through with that plugin and changing the intensity on things to get my disc working first and then I'll start importing other things. So this will be quite a quick video today of just very sped up my workflow and I'm going to discuss on top of it. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them below. I am not a look dev artist by any means. I've done it before. I don't enjoy it. It's always the bit of the pipeline I enjoy the least. So apologies if... Some of this doesn't make sense. This is just my process. So here I'm just importing the normal map. So I'm using the AI normal map node. I found that without that, I couldn't get that working properly. So just make sure to drop one of those into your little node graph thing beforehand. And now I'm just testing some basic colors for the subsurface to see if I can get that working before importing my textures. I kind of like working like this, breaking all the layers up one at a time. So I know exactly what each texture and each part of my shader is doing. So I know what's right and what's wrong. So here I'm just scaling up the model because subsurface works to real world scale. So my model was scaled down from the ZBrush export. So I'm just making it real world values so that the, the light diffusion or whatever's going on with SSS is working properly. So I've just added a basic blue skin color like the base texture. And then I'm playing around with some values for the subsurface to see if I can get that working nicely. So I jumped ahead a little bit. And I'm just, I've got some values that are working for me and now I'm just pumping in some colors because the skin is blue. Um, I didn't know what color I was gonna need for the subsurface radius. Um, but this I found was working quite nicely. I've put a really strong directional light behind so that I'm picking up that detail. This is by no means set in stone lighting at the moment. At this point, it's just for testing. And I go through during this a lot and do change it and change my HDRI as well. So one great thing about Arnold is you've got this kind of rendering that updates on the fly. Obviously this is sped up quite quickly, but you can see very quickly how the changes you're making in your shader affect your final render. So here I've just changed HDRI to see how that's looking. And at this point, I've got two directional lights. I've got one from behind for the SSS and I've got one from the side. And then the rest of the fill is coming from that HDRI. And now I'm just using the snapshot feature, which is a great little handy feature that you can save different renders so you can compare before and after. So if you're making changes like I am here of the displacement values, then I can see which one was working better and which one I prefer. And I can just kind of save old iterations. And I think you can even add comments onto them so you know what each one did. And just make sure to save those because I think when you close your file, if you don't save them as images, then they get wiped, which I found out the hard way during this process. So just playing with the strength of the normal map there as well to see if that gives me nicer results. And while I've cut down a lot of the look dev process, this took me quite a few days to get right. I think the longest bit of it was the displacement. So when I kind of nailed that, the rest was just plugging in my textures and just tweaking values a little bit. So now I'm just setting up a gold shader for this necklace. So before I was just using a basic shiny metal. So I'm just plugging in my maps that I've got from Mari for this. So I'm just bringing those in. Arnold likes to use text files. So what it will do is when you use a texture, it will convert it to a .tx file. So it should convert images to text files automatically. But if you want to do it yourself, you can go to the Arnold menu and then down to utilities and text manager, which I've just done here. And there you can create text files from them, delete them, and that way you can update them. And that just speeds up the render process. If you do this, it can take a while to convert them, but it will really speed up your renders. So here what I'm doing is I'm just playing with the bump setting the values of that. And so like I was saying before, I'm checking everything out one at a time. Now just playing with the roughness, seeing how that works with the bump. See if I need to go back to Mari to repaint it or change values or anything like that. If it's not strong enough, you can do some of this in look dev, but since I'm not a look dev or a lot of this, I do just go back to Mari and change things. So now I'm just importing those skin textures. So I was look deving as I was texturing with the project. So these are quite old textures and things do update quite a lot. 
I found that quite useful to see what was working and what doesn't work. But since I'm splitting these videos up into a per topic basis, then that's why I'm not showing me going back to Mari. So if you want to learn anything about that, then check out the other videos that I've done so far in this series. So here is some slightly more updated textures, looking a bit nicer as well. And I've added another light on the far side of the face just to help lift that a little bit. So I'm dropping down a color correct node for this gold material. If I can just hue shift it ever so slightly in there, then I can see if I don't need to go back to Mari, then that can save me some time. Or I can just use that as an approximation of what I need to do inside of Mari. If I know that I need to uh, hue shift ever so slightly or I need to desaturate, then I've got a value that I can do that with back inside of Mari. So it's kind of dependent on your workflow. Again, for me personally, I prefer doing everything inside of Mari if I can, just because I'm not really looked ever and I don't know this node graph particularly well. So now I'm actually creating a proper eye. So before I was just using some round spheres that I painted in ZBrush as kind of placeholders, but I wanna get the refractions working correctly. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using reference I found online of cat's eyes and working out how to, how to make this thing. There's a lot of really good images online of just anatomical breakdowns of humans, cat's eyes, whatever animal you're working on. I find those really helpful just so you know how the construction works. So you'll see me looking at those, just working out the side angle of the actual sclera and stuff like that and how the cornea is refracting and changing the shape. Just going in here, adding a pupil piece of geo. So this isn't the best way to do eyes. At this point, I was ready for the project to be done. So I was cheating ever so slightly. There are some really good videos online of actual eye creations, mostly humans. So this was a bit different because it was a animal eye. It was like a the slit rather than the round pupil. Now here I've just thrown some default shaders onto them to see how that refraction's working. As you can see, although it's a fairly flat piece of geo for the eye, the refraction of the cornea is adding that for me, but maybe the IOR is a little bit too much there. It's always good to just go online and you can always Google what the IOR of certain materials are, water, eyeballs, you name it, it's usually online. So I think I did that to get something a bit more accurate. So now what I'm gonna do is to add to this eye, I wanna add just a little bit of geo in the corner that I hadn't done before for the nicotating membrane, I think it's called. What's a nicotating membrane, you may ask? Well, Google says it's apparently like a third little eye lid that they have and it's this little transparent thing. So I'm just putting a hint of that in there and that's gonna go back into Mari with a bit of shading just to add a little bit of realism so the eye isn't as flat. And here now I've added my first pass of eye textures onto that eyeball geo just to see how things are going and it's looking all right. So now I'm just gonna go in and I'm adding another piece of geometry and what I'm gonna create is this sort of tube around the shape of the eyelid and what I'm gonna create is just a kind of glassy shader that's just gonna pick up spec highlights as if it's tears sat around the eyelid. This is really handy when you're doing digital creatures, digital humans, digital eyes, just to, it gives you a specular glint around the edge and I find this always really helps just sell it a bit more and stops the eye feeling flat. Just using the move tool with a soft select to get that in place. And I'm adding a bump, an overall just kind of purlin bump to it so that it picks up the spec a little bit better and doesn't look super CG and smooth. You can see here in that render, I'm getting this glint on the bottom. So I'm in home stretch, so I'm setting up proper lighting. I've changed the HRI here to something a bit different rather than the studio one I was using before and I'm just adding a black background. There was a concept that I was using to kind of go along roughly with this, but I do end up changing the lighting a bit. Something slightly less dramatic. So I'm using the AI area lights. They're a personal favorite of mine. I like that when you scale them up, scale them down, it changes the softness of the lighting. So I was lighting for quite a long time. Um, I had multiple setups as well because I did multiple camera angles with this asset. And I found my first pass of this. I did some renders, started comping it and came back to it a day later and I thought it looked crap. And then I spent a little bit longer. I was worried it was the textures of the model. 
I went just back to the lighting stage and relit it. Just something a bit more dramatic and slightly less flat and it changed it completely. It looks so much better. Um, so yeah, lighting is something to really focus on. It can really help sell your image. I find turning lights on and off super handy, just so you know, isolating them one at a time, kind of like when you're shading, look deving, just so you know what everything's doing. So now I'm just bringing in a blend shape that I created in ZBrush and I'm gonna blend shape that original mesh to this shape just so it's got a bit of a pose because it was looking a bit boring. I've got some X-Gen fur going on here. I'm not gonna go into that in this video. I might do a separate one just about adding that. It was a really, really simple process, but I didn't record it because uh, Bandy Cam crashed on me a couple of times during this process. So that's fun, lost that one, so I'm afraid I can't show that. But here's a fairly final render that I did manage to catch on Bandy Cam. The eyes are looking a bit dead. I think I go back in and change that and also do some light linking. Um, that's a super handy feature of my eyes. You can just make one light effect, just for example, the eyes to bring them up a bit. Or for example, I light linked the background piece of Geo that's that black card, turned all the lights off of that so it wasn't picking up any light and it was just pure black. Just setting up these teeth a little bit. They kind of came in at the last minute. Just a quick ZBrush sculpt, plugged in then quickly textured them in Mari. So yeah, if you do have any questions about the process, again, I'm not a look dever, but please do just leave them below. I might be able to help you out if you've got some. Like I said, probably we'll look at the X-Gen stuff in a different video. And I'm in the next one, I'm gonna go into how I composited this in Nuke. So now I'm just moving this Isla Geo, this specular glint kind of tear duct sort of stuff to the new pose because it wasn't quite lining up. Just going in, changing the exposure of these lights. And finally, this is just me showing how to set up AOVs in Arnold, just in case you don't know how to. So if you open up the render settings, you can go along to this AOV palette and just select the ones that you want. This can be useful for look dev, or if you're in a professional environment, then the chances are your compa or whoever is gonna want render passes, render layers, so that they can have a bit more fidelity over that compositing. So you just add them here, then you can change the name of anything, and you can also change the output image and stuff like that. So here's the final image. This is the untouched version, the straight from Arnold version. And then here you can see it after a bit of compositing. So I'm gonna go into that in another video. Hopefully this has been helpful. Again, not the best look dev artist, but I just wanted to quickly go through my process and show how I did it. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them below. And for more about me, you can head over to my website, michaelwild.co.uk. And there's also a mailing list there, which you can sign up to. I've started sending out emails for that. So when new videos come out or anything like that, then you can be the first to know. Take it easy, have a great one, and best of luck texturing, look deving, or whatever you're doing in 3D. Cheers.